Hello, DGENs. Welcome to Degenerate Takes. I am AJ. This is my co-host, Noah. Um, as always, thank you for listening. And whether it's on YouTube, Spotify, anywhere else you listen to podcasts, uh, please give us a follow at Degenerate Takes on Twitter, at Profect1 on Twitter, at no, N underscore Engelbretson for Twitter. Um, before we get into everything, Noah, um, some disturbing information I just found out. You enjoy the taste of ro- Robitussin and cherry cough medicine. Like we were talking about this before we went on air, but that's ridiculous, dude. How do you enjoy that? Dude, you know, I don't know. I just, you know, uh, for context, it was, uh, there's, you know, well, uh, when you get the cherry flavor, it's gotta be cough medicine for me. It can't be the other stuff like white oh. claw, truly those black cherries. Those are disgusting, man. I just, you know, I mean, yeah, those are disgusting. Cherry. They're disgusting. Really, really takes me back. Uh-uh. Really takes me back with that cough, cough syrup, cherry flavor. Oh, that's hard to beat. Hard to beat. I get. It. Ugh. I don't know. I think that's uh, that's a disturbing way to start off the show. But we'll get into something also, else. Also, hey, what? kudos to you for not butchering my last name like three or four times in a row now. <laughs> hey, dude, we're you're back starting, on track. You're starting you know? to get it. This is uh, starting to <laughs> become starting a to get uh, it. professional show. You know, we're starting to really learn ourselves and uh, what our, each other's last names are. So that's good for us. Um, <laughs> but um, someone who didn't get a chance to learn any names at his new job, uh, Patrick Beverly, um, formerly of the Grizzlies, formerly of someone else, um, is now going to the Timberwolves for a bunch of players, uh, Jared Culver and forward um, Juancho. Hernan, Hernana Gomez. Wow, that's a name. Um, per uh, Wojnarowski. Gomez. Thank you, Noah. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, along with that, NBA just kind of went off again. We're still in a hot period of free agency and um, signing people. So Joel Embiid, um, the 76ers, 76ers obviously sign him to a four-year, one ninety-six million dollar uh, super max contract extension. Noah, all these deals being being made. Um, the Patrick Beverly one is a little bit shocking, but the Joel Embiid one, I think everyone kind of saw coming. Um, any thoughts on this? I mean, I think this is pretty just standard stuff for this time of the season, but I don't know enough about the Grizzlies or the Timberwolves to really care. Yeah, I mean, I'll touch on Embiid first. Like, he he definitely deserved it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's, it's Joel Embiid. I don't think anyone's going to argue with that. I don't think I need to dive into that deep at all because, uh, you know, he deserved the super max. Mm-hmm. I mean, the dude's one of the three best centers in the league. So there's that. Um, as far as Pat Beverly, uh, a little bit interesting, I think. Yeah. What, what's going on you there? Know, you, you just, I think it's a mutually beneficial deal. I think you have two different teams looking for two different things. Uh, Memphis, they're just, you know, they're, they're young. They're adding more young talent that can go with it and I think the Timberwolves being you know as young if not an even younger team like they they need someone like Patrick Beverly to I I don't know how much locker room leadership he brings but it'll be good to have like a veteran presence and his especially his his defensive prowess I mean obviously he's not a big scorer that you're not gonna you're not gonna rely on him for scoring but for the Timberwolves you got you know Anthony Edwards and yeah Cat and some other guys for scoring the ball for you and it'll be good to add some of that defensive factor especially when you know some of those guys especially like you know Cat being one of them who have been yeah. knocked for not having a super big defensive presence um, literally I none should, from what I've seen and as, what I've heard as, <laughs> As shitty of moves as the Timberwolves usually make, I think this one was actually a decent one. You know, Culver, who was, uh, I think, the number six overall pick like two or three years ago, hasn't really produced. And then Juancho Hernan Gomez is, you know, he's just been a, you know, kind of deeper bench player. Yeah. uh, So, you you know, you're giving up two bench players for Pat Beverly, who I would assume would be in the starting lineup for the Wolves. You have to assume at this point for what they're giving for what they're giving away and what Patrick Beverly can do. I would assume that he has to start. I mean, or 
who gives a shit. I mean, throw him on the bench and he proves this is a bad decision. He could be off the bench, but but he'll he'll be getting good minutes regardless of whether oh, he's yeah. starting or off the bench. Absolutely, he'll be getting great so. minutes. Um, the Joel Embiid signing, I think, was a no brainer. That was going to happen. They need to get him some help, though. He is a good talent that could go to one of these super teams and really, you know, make a run at it. But he's staying with the 76ers. He's getting that money. Good on him. But 76ers need to figure something out because uh, Simmons ain't the the answer. Just not whatsoever. They need to get him out of town and um, get some other star in there that can help uh, Joel Embiid out a bit. But yeah, um, NBA I mean, free agency is kind of wild. <laughs> this stuff's been getting crazy. I mean, the Sixers are only like one, maybe two players away from from a, yeah, you know, making a run at a title. So it's they're they're real close. Uh, Embiid's not a guy you can lose, so it makes sense to sign him to a four year super max. Yeah, absolutely. And, I mean, yeah. the GM would be crazy. I like, you know. He, you know, the Goon to Coon stuff, that's just like, like whenever I see stuff like this, like a GM who signs a player to a big deal, like in someone who's been a big part of that team, it's like, well, yeah, that's a no brainer. And they've been doing stuff to keep him happy. It just blows my mind, the Packers situation still and what's going on there. But that's another topic for later. Um, anything else on the NBA and what's going on right now with uh, free agency? Um, I mean, not really. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some more moves here in the next couple of weeks that'll pop up and, uh, now we can cover those when we get to them, but for now, you know, we'll sit still until we see what happens. Yeah. I'm not going to speculate will... too much on what, what may or may not. I mean, a lot of the waves have already come down, but there's probably still a more, still a couple more to come. Yeah. Um, oh, I will say uh, what, something I saw. Uh, the uh, Christmas Day, um, yeah, Christmas Day uh, games were released for the NBA. Um, we have Lakers net in the middle. Um, the Suns are playing. I cannot remember who they're playing, and then I know um, we end with Luca and uh, someone. But regardless, the big game there is going to be Lakers and the Nets. Um, I'm excited about that to see the Nets. Um, you know, beat up on a retirement home, but. You know, that's just going to be a nice Christmas Day gift for us. Uh, any early thoughts on that, Noah? Um, jump on that game immediately and just slam the nuts, right? No, I mean, also, you're not going to get a line on that right now, but. Well, not now, but. Uh, you know, it's the, it's the old age Lakers against the can't stay healthy Nets. So, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's a if, rough position. I mean, all I'll say is if one of those teams is fully healthy and the other isn't, then I would bet on the fully healthy team. Yeah, sounds but, about right in the NBA that we're in right now. Whoever can stay healthy seems to be able to win. Um, but from a bunch of players who just got signed to a bunch of money to a – an to a league that's about to make a shit ton of money. And honestly, I think is about to become more relevant than they've ever been. The NHL is going to um, allow jerseys to have ads on the front of them, kind of like the NBA is doing and kind of like soccer has been doing since the beginning of time. Um, That will start in the 2022, 2023 season. I think this is huge. They're also moving over to ESPN. They're going to be on relevant channels. They're not going to be hidden away on NBC's, random ass channel that you have to find or if you're super desperate stream illegally um i think espn is going to do right by them they have great analysts there for hockey uh the jersey ads is just going to bring in more revenue make everything a little bit more relevant and i think we're going to see we're going to get more eyeballs on hockey and it's going to become a bigger sport um what's coming up noah do you think this is as big of a deal as i'm making out to be or do you think i'm just a little too excited about uh jerseys possibly saying disney on them no i um i'm gonna disagree i kind of hate the jersey advertisement shit why it's so small it's like right in the corner it's whatever no different than having nike yeah. or jordan or whatever or under armor no no it is different because like if i'm going and buying a jersey i don't want some company's advertisement on it 
Well, you, you know? can buy jerseys without the advertisement if you want to. See, I, I don't want to be doing that free advertisement shit. I get like they'll they'll make some more money off of it, but I, I, I for one like my jerseys clean. I like them. I like them clean. I look them like them looking nice. I don't want fucking company logos on them. However, however, I will say the ESPN NHL contract that'll be great. It's been probably Huge. I don't know fifteen. Probably been fifteen years since NHL was broadcasted on ESPN. Yeah, and we're and we're back. And more people need to get into hockey. If they you're do. watching this and you're not that into hockey, watch it because you will fall in love. Every single one, not every single one, but almost every person that I have like taken to a hockey game who's like never been to a hockey game, never really watched hockey before, they're like, "Oh wow, this is really exciting." And I'm like, "Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a great fucking sport." I'm like. No, absolutely. The first um, sporting event back from COVID that I went to was um, a Coyotes game. Obviously, they lost miserably because they're a terrible team, but <laughs> excuse me, it was so much fun. And then watching the Stanley Cup, it reminded me how awesome hockey is. And especially now with how much more athletic, faster, um, accurate these players are, these goalies now too, unbelievable um, what they can do in front of a net. It's just become such a more exciting sport. That puck is moving left, right, center. It's I like I like it more than basketball because they can actually hit people and you know, there's no flopping and shit like that. So yeah, I'll watch an NHL game over the NBA any day of the week. Um, I'm really excited for what the next couple of years of hockey is going to be. I do think that it's going to uh get a bigger fan base just because you're gonna get more eyes on the product and Hopefully, for the love of God, that leads the uh, Coyotes owner to spend some money and get some players in here. Or let's just put this team out of its misery and get it out of town. No, yeah, I was going to say, they're they going to sell. They need they to at this point, dude. Relocate. It's so sad. It's so sad. Like They're oh. going to sell, and then they're headed, they're headed to, like, Quebec or, I don't know, some shit. I want them to go to Wisconsin. They should go to Wisconsin, but. <laughs> They're not. No, they they're, they're probably gonna probably gonna end up in Quebec City, which will be annoying because you know fucking asshole French Canadians. <laughs> yeah, honestly. Um, which with the way that NHL is going, like I'm sad to see the team leave, but they're not making any money. They're not good. Let's go and give it to a team or an owner that's gonna take care of it and actually be competitive instead of like. <sighs> Arizona sports, dude. We just need to get it together. Like the, the Cardinals and the Suns are okay, but everything else just needs to kind of figure it out. Anyway, I'm done talking about yeah. the depressing so topic it's... that is Arizona sports right now. Considering <laughs> we don't even know if yeah. uh, Fitz is coming back yet, I still think he's coming back. But as you say, it's been it's been two, 2004 since last time uh, ESPN and NHL had a contract. Well, that'll be a nice little homecoming. That'll be. Oh, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, I'm they've, excited, they've, man. It's going to be great. They, they've, had a, they've had a couple games on ESPN Plus since uh, 2018, like 19, but um, 2004 was the last time it was like televised on ESPN. Interesting. So coming to uh, we, ESPN near you. We got a contract now. We do. We are ready to rock and roll. And so is the NHL with some awesome action. Um, someone who's not ready to rock and roll someone who won't be rocking and rolling anytime soon, especially in Jacksonville. Uh, that would be a uh, Mr. Uh, Tim Tebow. Poor guy, dude. I woke up this morning. I was in a good mood. You know, I was going downstairs, grabbing my energy drink for the day, about to go teach some swim lessons. And I see my boy Tebow gets cut. We can't even catch on Tebow over half of an interception, dude. Um, <laughs> But I mean, honestly, like watching him play Saturday, it was like going to a restaurant or something or even being at work and being like, how the hell does this guy still have a job? He does it so bad. He's a he's a terrible employee. But yeah, he got fired, as I think he should have. Um, are you shocked by this at all? Or do you think this is kind of the plan all along? Urban brings him in, sets a good culture, and then even the guy I love the most, Tim Tebow, can get cut from the team. I don't care. This is a business. Um, what are your thoughts on uh, Tim Tebow getting cut, and do you think this hurts the Jaguars whatsoever? Um, 
I'm, I'm not surprised necessarily. No. Um, I'm sorry for anybody who decided to bet the Tebow over a half touchdown <laughs> over. It's not dead yet. Somebody else can pick yet. him up. But um, yeah, I mean, God, his snaps that he got in that preseason game, I mean. They were rough. Just, just raw. Yeah, like that's like me and, and, going into the NFL right now, being like, "Yeah, I can play tight end. It's fine." Um, yeah, I don't know. I just he clearly wasn't ready to make the team. They cut him for a reason. Um, and you know, Urban Meyer is not going to cut Tebow unless it like is legit. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think it hurts the Jaguars at all. I think it actually helps them because there's no pressure to like get Tebow involved when he clearly is not. Well, there was no pressure to do it this with... weekend. I don't think there was any plan to get him involved. Like he didn't do anything except get run over and trip and stuff like that. He didn't do anything. He wasn't oh a productive my player God. whatsoever. Yeah, that, that that one that was floating around social media where he like literally like put his back to the guy and just kind of like. <laughs> Like, well, did you see the other one? He was uh pulling for a jet sweep and runs into a guy like, um, uh, I think it was a DN that was coming in, and the DN just stands up and just runs into him and knocks him onto the ass, dude. It was awesome, but yeah, Tebow was not ready yeah. for what that position was whatsoever. But hey, I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't think he's done in the NFL. I I think the stars have aligned for Tim Tebow. Are you ready for this, Noah? Because I think you're going to hate me for everything I'm about to say and how much sense it makes, okay? The Denver Broncos, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater. Not terrible quarterbacks, but let's be real. You don't want either of those guys starting for – don't give me that look. You don't want – you do not want Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater under center first week. So, my proposition, come back to the Holy Land. Let's go back to where Tebow mania started. Tim Tebow to the Broncos, starting quarterback. Noah, I think this is the only move. I think this is the best move for the Broncos because they're not going to win games. They got lucky. I mean, whatever happened against the Vikings will never happen again. This is a bad football team. Um, Yeah. Tebow to the Broncos. I think that is the move. I think that will make them a better football team, not a competitive football team, but a better football team in the long run while they try to figure out who's going to be their quarterback. No, no, Even no, acting no, like no, a no, no, magic no, or something. No, no, It's Teddy B. It's been Teddy B. He's a better option than anybody who's out on free agency. I don't know why they still have an open quarterback battle because Teddy Bridgewater – is way better than Drew Locke. He's better than anybody else who's out on the market. I just, I, I still look back and laugh at it, the fact that all these Denver fans thought they were getting Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> Bunch of fucking I thought idiots. he was going. I thought he was going to Denver, honestly. He was never, he was never going to Denver. He was never going to Denver. Okay. If he was going, if he was going, I, I've told you multiple times, if he was going anywhere, he was going to the Raiders. He was never going to Denver. You're right. And, that's why Tebow is going to the Denver Broncos to restart everything. He's going to, dude, I think this is a great decision. I think the Broncos need someone to sell tickets because if they don't have someone to sell tickets, Teddy B ain't going to sell tickets. Um, You need someone to sell tickets to make some money. And that's what they're going to be at this point, because if not, they're just going to be a shitty team with no attendance. Um, So yeah, I think they bring in, Tebow for a year, they suck. They tank for whoever's coming out of the draft, and then they rebuild. Oh, man, their defense is too good to tank. Eh. Uh, well, you know what? Since we're talking about the Broncos, let's talk about the Broncos and how they're going to do this season. Um, you say they have a good defense. I say it needs a lot of improvement going into this season. Um Vegas has them at eight and a half games over under um, to win the division plus 900. I really don't see any upside to this team whatsoever. Um, 
except for selling merchandise, if they bring in Tim Tebow. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, I do agree with you. He's a good quarterback. Um, he won't be enough to take them to playoffs or anything like that. Um, but you're right. He might take them above five wins um, if they somehow can scrape that together. Noah, what do you what do you think of the Broncos going into this season? Season. You said they're over unders at eight and a half. Yeah, and I think you slam that under as hard as we have said to slam anything. Yeah, I'd I'd, I'd take that under very hard. Yeah. Oh, eight and a half too. That's juicy. Um. Yeah. No, they. Uh. You know, they got a. Uh, you know, top ten defense. I would say. Um borderline i mean i they'll probably be like between like seven and 12 final rankings in defense would be my guess so they're gonna have a real solid defense they're gonna be able to stop people um here's the only problem is their offense will not just like last year they're not gonna be fucking capable of scoring points no none whatsoever they're gonna fucking suck so if your defense holds a team to you know 17 points it doesn't matter if you only score 12 yeah, exactly. Like, um, and that's my thing about this and, whole and team. They're, Sorry, they're, they're yeah. going to have that problem. They're going to have that problem again last year. It was what they was last year. They did, like lose a game like 17 13. And it's like, well, your, your defense did all they could. They held them to 17 mm-hmm. points, but your offense can't even score more than, you know, 13 points. Like, and they're going to have the same problem because Drew Locke was the worst quarterback in football last year. The fact that they're considering Drew Locke over Teddy Bridgewater just tells me they don't even know what the fuck they're doing on offense. Not like even considering. It they're, seems they're, like they're, they're, they're leaning. Coach, I don't even know. They're leaning Drew Locke. It doesn't seem like it's a competition whatsoever. It seems like they're leaning Drew Locke, which is a mistake. And, and, but... and, and there should be no reason they're doing that because Drew Locke had like the worst season since Nathan Peterman. If you That's remember him, if you remember Nathan Peterman, yeah, Drew Locke's like, almost on that level and i mean it's just they're not going to do they don't have a run game they don't have a pass game like they have good the weird thing is they have good receivers but they have no great receivers you got jeremy judy you got noah font at tight end like they've got weapons but they just have no one to throw the ball and nobody to run the ball i mean like yeah you can't establish a run game you're not going to win in the nfl nowadays um, you know, their offensive line is actually not that bad, but uh, it's just they're, they're not going to produce on offense. And in today's NFL, if you're not scoring points, you're not going to win. Yeah, it's as simple as that. Um, so with all that being said, Noah, floor and ceiling, um, what do you think the uh, least amount of games they're going to win? Because looking at their schedule, they don't have a tough schedule. I just think they're a bad team, if that makes sense. Um I think they're going to lose a lot more games than they're going to win, obviously. Um, and I think they're going to lose a lot of games that they're supposed to win. I think they might sneak out a couple wins against some worse teams. But, like, I have them losing week two against the Jaguars at um, Jacksonville. I think that's a lock right there. Um, but no. floor ceiling, Noah, what do you got? Um, I put their floor at three and 14. That's respectable. I put their ceiling at if they can really get shit clicking, uh, eight and nine. Wow. Definitely still slamming that under because there's nine games that they play the Chiefs twice. Like there's they're not gonna win nine games. They play the Chargers twice, they're not gonna win nine games. Um, I think they'll split with the Raiders. Uh what do you think their actual record's gonna be? You have a hundred dollars to bet right now. What's their actual record? Uh, six and eleven. Not bad. I think they're. I think they're deep. I think their defense will win some of these games against some of these other shit teams, but uh, but those are going to be low scoring games. I mean, look out for a win. Uh, I think do they they play the Giants this year? Or? Yeah, week one at Giants. See, that's one like something like that. Like games like those take the fucking under because 
just two bad teams I, I playing bad football. That's that's like a guarantee. I'm not I'm not giving you your money back if you lose your bet, but that's pretty <laughs> close to guarantee. Take the under, whatever the fucking over under is on Giants oh. Broncos. Take the under. Let's check that real quick because that has to be that is up already. Um, oh, you got two. You got two garbage offenses and two pretty decent defenses. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's definitely an interesting week one matchup. It really can go either way. Um, the line right now, money line minus 116 for the Broncos, the New York Giants minus 102. Um, the website is freaking out on me. Let's figure this out. Um, over under 42 and a half minus 110 either way. So Vegas is kind of on the same thought process as we are. These are two bad teams. It can kind of go either take, way. The spread's the at under. one point. Take, take the under. Free money at that point. <laughs> take right. the under. That game's gonna be like seven. That game's gonna be like seventeen to ten. I'm telling you. I'm telling yeah, you. Yeah, right that's now. gonna be a rough one. I'm it's I'm I'm calling on it right now. Seven seventeen to seventeen yeah. to ten. That's the final score of that game. Who's going over? Oh, I don't know. Just one of them is going to win in the last. The second final score is seventeen to ten. <laughs> okay. Maybe, maybe even sixteen to ten because it'll be like tied and there won't be an extra point. I don't know, but it's going to be a low scoring game. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, from a team that looks like absolute dog shit after last season, season, um, let's talk but, about a team that uh, seemed to kind of come into its own. It seems like they definitely found their guy. They found their quarterback who's going to lead them for the next 10 years. Um, once his rookie contract is up, he'll get signed for big money. Uh, of course, we're talking about the Los Angeles Chargers and Justin Herbert. What a quarterback. I'm a huge fan of his and what he has done um, last year, getting thrown into the fire with the weird needle stuff with, um, God, who was their starter? Aaron Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, dude, poor guy. Tyrod Taylor, great quarterback. I think he's a half decent quarterback, but that's an unfortunate injury. And then Herbert comes in and just lights it up, dude. This is a team that really, I think, can blow up this season. And um, you said it last season. This is a team, that, and um, Herbert's a guy that can really do well going into the future, especially in a division like this. Um, this team, in my opinion, is on the verge of competing with the Chiefs in that division for that number one spot if they can win a couple of key games and um, win and split that series with the Chiefs. Uh, what do you think about this team going into the season? I mean, you know, I was, I was hyped on Herbert for yeah. like day one after, well, not day one, but after I saw him start two games. So about week three last season, I was hyped on Herbert. I bought in immediately after watching him play like once or twice. And he did not disappoint. No, not at all. He was uh, excellent. I, I think he'll put up similar numbers this year to what he did last year. I don't think he's going to show a ton of improvements. I don't think he's going to regress necessarily. I think the Chargers are going to be a very like middle-of-the-road football team. Really? They middle of the road? The, they beefed up their up. They beefed up their offensive line, which is good, but th their defense still worries me. I mean, mm. I um, I think they're going to be good enough to win a number of games. I think they're going to be a game or two shy of making the playoffs. Really? Because um, I have them easily getting a wild card spot or something like that. I, I think this is a good football team. Honest to God, I think they're better than the Rams coming out of L.A. Um, yeah, yeah, no. You said better than the Rams. Yeah, dude, you're too hype on the Rams. The Rams are not – nothing <laughs> drastically is going to change except they might score a couple more touchdowns. Bruh. They're still going to get beat. Matt Stafford isn't used to winning football games. He likes to lose football games. And that's not going to change just because of – um that team down there it's a good football team the rams are a good football team 
they're not nearly as good as you're hyping them up to be. You're getting Rams fans so excited about their football team just so they can be disappointed all season, okay? The Chargers is the team in L.A., just like the Clippers are the team in L.A., not the Lakers. The Chargers are the team in L.A., not the Rams, all right? Simple as that. Oh, that is such a bad take. No, it's not, dude. The Rams are not going to be nearly as good as you're talking about. Not even a little bit. I'm more excited you about the really, Chargers and what they're going to do this season. You really think the Chargers will be better than the Rams this season? Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Would you put 100 bucks on it? Yeah. Would you put a hundred bucks on it? I put a hundred bucks on it. I put I put, I would put a hundred bucks on the Chargers to be better than the Rams this season. That's how confident I am in that. Are we taking that then? Yeah, let's go. Noah. hundred dollars. I think the Chargers will do right. better than the Rams this season. All right, Vir- virtual 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 shake, virtual right shake bro. It's done. It's done. Anyway. Well, thank you. Thank you for the free hundred bucks. Uh, Thank you for the $300. um, I appreciate that more than anything, Noah. Um, Well, we're obviously going to have very different opinions on this, but we might as well get into it. Floor ceiling for this team. And you're going to be insulting, so you might as well get it over with. Uh, Six wins for my floor. Okay. Six and 11. Six and 11. What's their ceiling? Um. This year, ten and seven. And and let me say that this is like a team that I, I do expect to be like really good in the upcoming years, but this year is just it, it's not it. It's too soon. They're not going to get that level of success yet. All right, what do you have their actual? What's their actual record going into this? Uh, I like them at. Uh, eight and nine. Disgusting. That no, is so no, insulting. No, no, no. Not, so insulting. Nine, eight, eight. Oh. Nine, nine, nine and eight. Oh, nine, nine and eight. eight. That's that's so much better. Insulting, dude. So insulting. How dare you, honestly, disrespect Justin Herbert and this team like that. This is a good football team. The second best in the AFC West. One of the best in the AFC, if I do say so. They are going to win 12 games and they're going to go to the playoffs. Simple as that. I'm not saying they're going to win anything in the playoffs. I'm saying they're winning 12 games and they're going to the playoffs. Noah, don't give me that look because they're a good football you team and they're going to. Huh? 12 games? Yeah. 12 and 5. You said 12 games? Yeah. 12 oh and 5. And looking at the schedule, that's all I see is 12. What and are five. you smoking right now? Nothing. Dude, it's 12 and 5. Simple <laughs> as that. Week one, football team, that's a W. Cowboys, week two, that's a W. Chiefs, they're going to take a fat out there. Raiders, that's a win. Browns, Ravens, loss. Patriots, Eagles, Vikings, that's three wins right there. Steelers is a loss. They're going to beat the Broncos. They're going to beat the Bengals. They're going to beat the Giants. Lose to the Chiefs, maybe win that game because that's at home. And then win against the Texans, win against the Broncos, win against the Raiders. That's 12 wins right there. Simple as that. It is a good football team. They are winning 12 games. And I'm winning 100 You're bucks. Crazy, man. I'm winning 100 bucks from you, Noah. You're crazy. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're crazy, man. No, no. I'm looking at the schedule and I am predicting this properly. Um, well, All from right. one of the. Man, whatever you say. That is what I say. It's they're, they're okay. a good football team. They're better than the Rams. They're the sure. best team in LA. All right. Sure. Okay. Anyway, that's that's like that's like betting on the Angels to be better than the Dodgers. No. Maybe no, not quite not. to that extent, but that's like pretty similar. But <laughs> you know, you're bit. the one who took it, so yeah, I did, fine. and I'm it's gonna fine. be the it's one fine. getting a hundred bucks. Yeah, you're gonna be the one paying me a hundred bucks, but we will. Yeah, let's move on. Anyway, fine. Um, from one of the best teams in the league to going to be one of the worst teams in the league, the Las Vegas Raiders. They suck. They the Raiders. Suck. The Raiders. They suck, dude. I'm not 
looking forward to watching any games of theirs. Um, they got rid of their entire offensive line, dude. Derek Carr is going to get his head taken off. Um, not only that, uh, but poor Darren Waller at tight end. He is a beast. He's a beast of a player, and he's going to waste uh, um, another year of years of his career there. Uh, fantasy owners, though, Darren Waller is honestly a solid pickup. Um, I had him last year, and he did wonderful for me. I think he'll have another great season coming in. Um, what do you think of this team, dude? Because besides having a nightclub in the end zone, I really don't see an upside to this team. Uh, the only upside would be the fantasy upside. I mean, uh, Waller, obviously, yeah. you touched on. He'll be, you know, probably the second or third best tight end this year in fantasy. Um, Derek Carr will be a good fantasy pick. That's my take on that. I think, you know, um, especially because you can wait to take Carr until like the late rounds. He's not going to be a flashy quarterback, but he'll be very productive. But he's going to get killed every play. Uh, that doesn't matter for fantasy. I mean, sacks don't count against you. And no, they don't count against like you. That, but so. if he can't throw the ball down the field because he's getting killed every play, that's going to hurt a little bit. I'm just saying, I think Carl will be a good fantasy quarterback. Um, the running game, a little interesting with the combination of Jacobs with now Kenyon Drake there in the backfield. Yeah, Kenyon Drake, good but, talent out of uh, Cardinals. We enjoyed our time with him. Um, sad to see him go, but not sad to see him leave, if you know what I mean. Um, I think this Raiders team will be one that will be able to put up points. Um, they're going to be a heavy passing offense. Um, their defense, maybe one of the worst in the NFL. Yeah. Terrible. They, they really Terrible. they really scare me. And that that's why I'm saying like fantasy wise, like might as well pick up some Raiders guys. Even some of their young unproven rookies or like young unproven receivers, they might actually produce in fantasy because this team's gonna be passing the ball so much. That's um, true. The only thing that worries me is like health with like Derek Carr getting hit that much. Yeah. Which I'm hoping he can stay healthy because you know this. Very well could be the Packers quarterback next year. We just we need Buddy to stay healthy, take minimal hits. Yeah. Um, Looking out for yourself next so season. Comes back that's to the Packers and and reunites with uh, Devontae. And then uh, we got that. But either way, I mean, this is another team that I see having a very like mediocre record, like a couple games under five hundred, maybe. I don't know. Piss poor is how I would like to describe what I think their record is going to be this season. Um, but I have, no, they'll, they'll win, they'll win games. They'll win games. Just not a lot. Yeah, they won't win jack shit. Um, so floor <laughs> ceiling Noah for this, um, football team, if you can call it that. Um, honestly with the Raiders, I'm putting their floor at five, five and, uh, 12. Okay. Ceiling. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to say 10 and 7, but I'm going to drop that down to 9 and 8 because they're going to just, I don't know. They're just not going to be, they're just not going to do it. I don't know. Okay. And then 100 bucks to bet on the record. What is their actual record? 5 and 12, 8 and 9, 9 and 8 ceiling. Where are you going? I'm going right, right in the middle at 7 and 10. Wow, you have a lot more faith in, in them than I do. Uh, two, and a, 2 and 15. I got them 2 and 15. I have them maybe winning two two games. See, so you think they're going to be one of the like three worst teams in the league? Yeah. Them, Jacksonville, Jets. Okay. Um, I absolutely disagree with that but all right oh i i'm sorry i'm sorry take the jets out put the bengals in is that better for you no i still absolutely disagree with that i mean they're they're gonna be better than at least six teams well i guess we'll see um 
Vegas does kind of agree with you. They have the over under at seven games, um, minus one ten either way, and to win the division at plus thirteen hundred, they are the lowest um, odds to win the division. Um, well, yeah, no, that makes sense because I mean they yeah. have the fucking Chiefs in their division, so. Well, yeah, um, but and we didn't touch on this. I don't think um, the Chargers over under nine and a half games plus one ten over minus one thirty five under. I'm slamming that over once I get the opportunity. Um, and then to win the division plus four ninety. I think the Chiefs still have this division locked up. Um, and you know what? We might as well talk about the Chiefs if you're down because they are our last team in the AFC West. Um, what can we say about the Chiefs that hasn't been said about the Chiefs? Great quarterback, great offense, great defense, great coach. Um, obviously one of the best teams in the league. They are projected to win the Super Bowl. Their odds, I believe, are like plus 300 or plus 200 or something like that. Um, they're ahead of the Buccaneers to win. And um, – over under 12 and a half games plus 120 over minus 140 under uh, division is minus 290. What do you think of this team? I think they're going to be excellent again this year. I think they're going to go on a tear. Um, they're going to want to prove that they deserve to be back in that Super Bowl spot. And I think that starts week one and doesn't end until they win another trophy. Um. Yeah. You all, you know what, AJ, they got, they got better this off season. Yeah. Which is better. unbelievable. How? And, um, you know, plus odds for them to win the Super Bowl. You, you should fucking take that. Um, you know, do I, if I had to give a percentage chance they win, I don't know, maybe 20, 30%. But, like, you get a team this good with plus odds. I mean, they reconstructed their entire offensive line. Yeah, somehow and they are should, dangerous and it, again. And, and and it's better. Their defense is still good. They still have Mahomes. They still have Tyreek Hill. They still have Travis, Travis Kelsey. Kelsey. Clyde Edwards Hilaire, et, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, dude, Clyde, Clyde's not even that good. People need to really stop fucking He's great. What are you Clyde. talking about? No, any running back in that system, it doesn't matter because they're just – because everybody's so – the problem is yeah, the defense is going against this team are so freaked out about the pass that like the running back doesn't get stacked in the box ever. So any running backs can be good in that system. I mean, it doesn't right. matter. We'll talk about your system That's issues later because you somehow think every good team is a system, which does make sense, but that doesn't make them any worse. It just makes them know how to play the game. I mean, every team has a system. They just operate in different ways. I'm just saying Kansas city system, the running back doesn't, really matter any running backs can be productive okay so then Ish. would you say because you said tom brady was a system quarterback his entire time in new england correct would you say that patrick mahomes is also just a system quarterback no why he's running a system he's succeeding in the system he was put into the system he's not doing anything brady is any different because he's – are you hearing yourself? I mean, yeah. Mahomes is literally – Mahomes is quite literally like one of the focal points of this offense. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, saying in, I'm saying in Kansas City system, the running back, whoever is there, doesn't really matter. They're going to be productive no matter what. Just like how in New England system, it was set up so they had all the pieces around, and the quarterback, whoever was quarterback, it wasn't really going to matter as long as they're not turning the ball over a ton because they were going to produce. I don't know what pieces do I, do you're I need, talking do I, about do I, in New England. I don't know what do, do I need to explain, you're talking do I need, about. Like, do I need to explain to you how a, how a system operates? I, I understand how, like how a system operates. Thank you, Noah. But okay. I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, so, yeah, they're going to be a good team this season. Um, 12 and a half games. Like, that's an easy over, in my opinion. Um looking at their schedule, even the hard teams they play, the quote unquote challenging teams, like they play the Packers and I still think that's an easy dub. Um, floor ceiling, how you feeling about this team? Yeah, 12, 12 and a half is a hard mark to bet just because it's so high, but I do think they'll go over. Yeah. 
um, I a floor ceiling's hard because like <laughs> if Mahomes gets injured, that completely alters things. But assuming he's healthy throughout the whole season, we'll put their floor at. 11, 11 and six. 11 and six. Okay. And, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and put their ceiling at 17 and 0. I mean, yeah. I mean, only team I'm going to, only, only team I'm going to put either a 17 and 0 or 0 and 17 floor ceiling on is, is the Chiefs because I, I do think. They're, um, I do think they're going to be putting out their probably their best team of the last three years, and they won a Super Bowl and have made two, and they're going to be really fucking good. I mean, there's no doubt about that. So, yeah, absolutely, they're going to be an excellent football team. I don't think seventeen and zero is crazy whatsoever. Um, but hundred dollars to bet today. What do you think their actual record will be? Um, 15 and two. 15 and two. I can see that. I can see that. I have them at 16 and one. I think they're going to do just mind blowing work this season. I think they might get caught up playing the bills or the Packers or some team like that. That also has just an excellent team, but it's hard to deny that the chiefs are one of the best teams in football. Can they dethrone? I, I, um, what? Uh, I actually think, you know, I, I think they'll beat the Bills. I think the team you got to worry out, worry about for them is uh, Patriots. I think Belichick will game plan something that'll cause them some issues. And well, they just have to. I'm just saying. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not saying they will. I'm saying they may do that. And you heard it here first bet the Patriots when they play the Chiefs on the spread, not on money line. Maybe money line too. I don't know. Whatever. But I think they'll be – Chiefs will be really good. Chiefs will be really good. They will be a good team. They will be a good team. Um, you know, speaking about the Patriots, they play Thursday night versus the Eagles. Um, line right now, Pats minus one point one and a half points. Uh, Pats minus 125. Money line, Eagles plus 105. Over under 39. Um, I don't know if you saw the picture of Bill Belichick just being an absolute animal in the gym, but you know, he got under the bar. He started squatting great form from the GM head coach. Uh, I mean, it's still preseason football, but something to bet on. Noah, what are you looking at going into this Patriots Eagles game? Um, I like the Patriots a lot. But I also really like the Eagles first quarter. Yeah. Eagles first quarter plus a half. I'd take that because the Eagles are coming out with their first unit. You know, Hertz, Rager, Devontae Smith, if he's ready. Oh, yeah. I don't know, like all these other receivers. Not that the Patriots aren't coming out with their first unit. I don't know, but whatever. Um, but I, I'm excited to see what Mac Jones can do also in his second game. Uh, my guess is he'll probably have the whole second and third quarter. Cam Newton will probably get the first. Uh, based on the last game, I mean, there was nothing to jump Mac Jones over Cam Newton. I think they're still going to give him like another chance or two to like, you know, try to prove that he's number one, but. So long as, like, I mean, the only scenario I see Mac Jones, like, being the week one starter is if Cam Newton is just playing, like, absolute dog shit and then oh, Mac yeah. Jones comes out and just, like, plays, like, like super fucking well. But even then, but, I don't I don't see Mac Jones starting whatsoever. Um, probably not, but that would give starter. him a chance. That would give him a chance. But all I'm saying is all Cam Newton has to do is play like mediocre and he's not going to lose his starting job. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I do think one thing to look out for is 
if Cam Newton doesn't play Thursday, then he's definitely the starter. Same thing with next week. If he doesn't play at all, he's definitely their starter going into week one. These teams don't want their starting quarterback getting hurt off some bullshit game. Um, with Cam Newton starting, though, if he does, um, I yeah, the Eagles still with Jalen Hurts and everyone. I think Jalen Hurts is going to be an exciting quarterback this year. I don't think he's the answer to the Eagles' problems. I think it's a much deeper problem than just who's starting under center. Um, but with that being said, I do agree with you. Plus a half in the first quarter, I think, would be easy money. But you got to take Pat's money line or even um, – the Pats one and a half if you wanted to bet on a team because I think the Patriots win this game outright simple as that um but looking at last week I believe it was 13 and 2 on the under or something mind-blowing like that um under at 39 points that's tempting Well, well and um these preseason unders are, are way lower than regular season ones too. They're yeah. most of them are in the th- the thirties. So, so definitely something interesting to interesting to uh, think about. That might be worth a sprinkle or part of a parlay. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd I'd watch out this I'd watch out this week because the way Vegas lines work, you know, they're gonna adjust with the way people are betting, and so people are gonna like see that bunch of the ones went under and so they're gonna react to that, that. and so I'd, I'd just be wary of that I'm not saying not to bet the unders i'm just saying be careful be, cautious. be careful out there and remember life is also, too short to bet the, the unders and well and the the deeper we get into uh preseason the more like the starters and backups are getting actual reps so true true that is something to keep in mind as well keep, keep that in mind yeah, these scores um, will start. These scores will start going up slightly. Yeah, hopefully. I'd r- rather watch good football than the Pop Warner bullshit we've been watching last weekend. But I'll take any football I can get at this point. So thank God it's back. But yeah, um, no, you got anything else for the DGens before we uh, sign off for the day? Um. I don't know, man. Go back, go. Bears still yeah. suck. Yeah. Wait, okay. I got up. I need a minute because, <laughs> bro, <laughs> bro, these last two days, I can't turn on any ESPN, FS1, YouTube. I can't turn on anything without someone stroking the Bears ego. Like, bro, we're a bad football team we are not a good football team i do not need to hear this bullshit about justin fields coming in and saving us he's not no, he's, he's 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 gonna be a hall of famer he's a future <laughs> hall of famer yeah and so is mad Nagy, dude come on like and and that's the thing he's not a good coach he's not a good coach yes he made mitch trubisky look good for one season but then we saw what happened after that so he caught fire in a bottle for a season and then did, just let it go to shit. Did you mean? Did you mean one game? Because <laughs> whatever, I, it doesn't I matter. It doesn't I can't, matter. I can't remember a whole season where where Trubisky was good, but but regardless, we he was at some point he was called a good quarterback. You got to remember that he was drafted over Patrick Mahomes for some effing reason because the Bears can't draft to save their life. But that's another issue for later. But anyway. If there's anyone in the sports media world out there listening to this, please hear my plea. I'm tired of it. They're not going to be good. The Packers are going to win the division. The Bears still suck, unfortunately. And we need to get Matt Nagy and Ryan Pace out of there. I don't give a shit how good Justin Fields is. He'll be just as good with a better coach. So let's stop this propaganda bullshit of the Bears being good. And let's get back to the facts at hand. No, they are a bad football team. <laughs> it's, it's been ridiculous, dude. I don't know if you've been seeing it, but my God, it's terrible. And it's like, oh, Matt Nagy might be a genius for making this play. Shut up. No, he's not. He's not a no. genius. Anyway, uh, please like, share, and subscribe, of course. Uh, thanks for listening to us. We will be back Thursday. <laughs> Oh, sorry.
for those I'm just of you, you don't need to know, hear that song again. For those of you who don't know, that is the beginning to the Bear Stealth of Sock. Um, it's a song that Packers fans like to play when they're being complete douchebags. Uh, but anyway, oh, it's a thanks great for song. listening. Definitely give it a listen. <laughs> don't give it a listen. God, don't kill it a listen. Anyway, we'll see you on Thursday with uh, more preseason action and um, a review of uh, the Patriots-Eagles game and what a dumpster fire of a game that was because it is preseason. Have a good week. We'll see you Thursday.